Guys, Dirk Durham here with Paul, and we're going to talk to you about how to use elk calls. What I like to do when I talk to people about first using elk calls is I want you to crawl before you walk. I don't want you to put your call in your mouth and try to rip some big bugles like you see uh, on all your favorite YouTube callers. Uh, what you want to do is build fundamentals by making fundamental sounds. And the very first sound I want to talk about is making this little high-pitched noise called that I like to call the mosquito sound. It sounds like kind of like a mosquito. And this high-pitched sound is where a lot of hunters struggle with making that consistently. So that's where we want to begin. So what I like to do is I like to take my call, I put that call in my mouth. Now we're going to want to put this call with the, the metal part up, this little dome part on the amp call. We want that up facing the roof of your mouth. And then we want to have the latex, the open end, face out towards your teeth. So just like so. And we're going to find that comfortable spot right in the middle of your mouth. Um, you don't want it too far forward or it might be a little tickly on your tongue. You don't want it too far back or it'll be, you'll get that gag reflex. So, <laughs> and that's no good for anybody. So put it in. You'll want to find that strong part of your tongue. I like to say the strongest part of your tongue where if you had a grape in your mouth, you could push really hard and smash that grape, right? So we're going to flex our tongue really tight. We're going to push this call up and we're going to seal off all the air around the call. And also we want to make sure we seal off the air on the back side of our teeth. We don't want any air escaping around the outside of our teeth and coming out because that air will bypass your call and you won't. And once we start loosening our tongue a little bit to let the air come through, you won't get as much volume or air pressure across that latex. Let's put this in our mouth, put it in there, find that super, find that sweet spot on your tongue and then um, make sure it's all sealed off nice and tight so you're arching that tongue up, pushing hard, and then just relieve a little bit of pressure to where you have a little bit of air seep across the latex. It's going to sound something kind of like a little mosquito. Push a little harder. You might want to put a little for, further forward. Oh, okay. Yeah, just find that real strong part on your tongue. That's great. That's great. And you'll have to experiment with the, the call placement. You know, once you get it in there and you can make a noise, then you may want to tailor it a little bit closer and figure out exact, that little exact spot where your tongue feels the strongest and you can really put the pressure on that, that latex to make that mosquito noise. We got that fundamental sound now. Now, something to practice to build muscle memory, build endurance, and let your tongue know that every time I put this call in my mouth, we're going to push it up there, we're going to feel strong, and we're going to hold these kind of notes. So it's boring, it's not fun, it's not a big sexy bugle, but what we're going to do is make that a really long, long, high-pitched mosquito noise. We're going to use our core of our diaphragm, and we're going to brace ourselves, and we're going to push air pressure across that for, for as long as you have a breath, right? So what this is going to allow is you to learn how to control that high pitch with your tongue with a variable amount of air pressure. So in the beginning you have lots of air to maintain. You want to hold back a little bit. You don't want to blow super hard. But as you start depleting your lungs of air, you're also going to be having to push a little bit harder with your latex to maintain that pitch. For the sake of time, I won't sit here and just do it <laughs> and show you, but you, you kind of get the idea. You want to push that full air out. And then and this is a great exercise just to, to learn control because, like I said before, a lot of guys just struggle hitting that high note. Well, now your tongue immediately knows where that high note is. That way later on when we try to make a full bugle, your tongue knows exactly where to go and how hard to push to achieve it. Okay, now what we're going to do is go over how to turn that little mosquito noise into an elk call, an elk vocalization. Okay, so the very top end of a cow call when you make it is that same mosquito pitch, it's very high. So we're gonna shorten up that mosquito length of call and we're gonna, once we have, once we maintain that high pitch, we're going to 
let it, we're gonna loosen our jaw just a little bit and we're gonna loosen our tongue. We're gonna let that note slide off the back and to where when you finally quit putting any air pressure against it, your tongue is barely even touching the latex. So I'll do this in slow motion. That's slow motion cow call. Now to speed it up into real time. You just want to have that smooth slide off transition. And it does take some work. Too far forward. That's really good. That's really good actually. <laughs> but I always encourage guys to pull out their cell phone and video themselves while they're calling because it's so hard, so difficult to, uh, whenever somebody says, okay, do it like this, and you think, okay, I'm doing it like that. But one thing I noticed Paul's doing is as he's doing that, he's making a shape with his lips. He's kind of going EO, making an EO shape with his lips, and that's going to change the pitch of the call. And a lot of us, you know, learning how to call, people say, yeah, you want to make an elk call, it's, you want it to make that EO sound, but it's more of an EA sound than an EO. And we want to shape our lips like we're saying EA, EA. You know, we're going to have a semi open mouth because if we, if we make our little O with our lips, it's going to sound kind of like this. That doesn't sound authentic. That sounds more authentic. So it's more e and not EO. And you can make some variation of pitch with tongue pressure, air pressure, shorter, higher pitched sounds like a calf elk would make. We're gonna make those without dropping our tongue so, so far down. We're gonna keep pretty decent pressure on it with our tongue. And for the more mature cow sound, we're gonna, we're gonna drop our tongue a little bit lower. That way our tongue is barely touching on that low end of the note and get those little deeper nasal type sounds. So then while calling elk, you can mix it up. So now guys, we're gonna talk to you about how to make a bugle out of the mosquito noise, right? Who knew? Mosquitoes and elk go hand in hand. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna take that long, drawn out mosquito noise and we're gonna let those notes, notes slide off on the back end again, but it's gonna be a lot quicker. And when, when we do that, we're also gonna add in our voice put in some voice inflection. We're gonna put in a sound that feels, we're gonna, we're gonna have the same motion or feeling that we're, um, like if someone were to punch us in the gut. Uh, uh, you know, it, a lot of folks struggle with adding that in at the end. Uh, some guys wanna go, like if they're making bear noises. <laughs> I'm a bear. <laughs> but we, we wanna make that punch to the gut sound. It sounds more authentic. I'll demonstrate. And this will be kind of a locator bugle. That was a little bit too much at the end. We're gonna drop it off. It didn't sound too bad, but we're gonna drop it off to We're gonna shorten that ooh. Just short and quick. We don't wanna do this. Way too much growl. It doesn't sound authentic. So, what can I improve? Uh, don't forget the punch to the gut. Oof. This is what gets everybody, and it's okay if you can't remember. It's just real. It's really tough. So okay. it's here's slow motion. Ah. So I just, ah. just drop it off, and we're dropping our jaw, okay. but we want to make sure we maintain a seal with your lips. Because anytime you're not sealing up your tube with your lips, you're getting air escaping out the side and it'll de degrade the sound of your bugle. Okay. Yeah. You, 
Yeah, that sounds great. Make it a little bit longer though. So hold, okay. hold that high pitch a little longer and then drop it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Almost. That's, that's okay. good. You're getting it. You're getting it. You're getting it. It's a high school bull. Yeah, it's, it's basically a raghorn. <laughs> okay, so next we're going to do a full bugle, right? Okay. It's a little more tricky because now we're going to st start at the bottom of that staircase and we're going to barely buzz that latex with our tongue. So we're making very little contact with our tongue and then we're going to start pushing. Okay, and we're going to start pushing pressure and we're going to climb that staircase of notes till you hit your mosquito note. You're going to hold it for a second or two, probably two seconds, uh -huh. and then you're going to drop it off just like we did there. And just we're going to punch. Yeah, and then okay. we're going to punch it at the back end. Okay. And at the front end, we're going to inflect a little bit more voice as well, but we're not going to growl like a grizzly bear. <laughs> we're going to growl almost like we're trying to clear phlegm out of our throat. Kind of, uh, uh. we don't want to go, uh. we want to go, uh, sounds more realistic. It's not, it doesn't overdo it. Here's too much growl. Not an, and here's just the right amount of growl. We're barely putting any kind of voice inflection in there. And I think where a lot of guys will go wrong in the beginning too, when they try to start blowing their bugle, they come out of the gate like super hard, like they're riding a buck and bronc, right? They're giving all the air pressure they got. We don't want to do that. We want to ease into it. Like grandma pulling out from the grocery store into traffic, just putt, 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 putt. You don't want to get out there. And then once you're in line, once you got your line going, that's when you start putting more pressure with your tongue and more air pressure to make it louder. It's a lot easier to control that call going up those, that ladder in notes if you have your air pressure under control too. Okay. So we're gonna start out. We're gonna just barely touch our, our tongue to our call. revving up, revving up, and then yep. gut punch it. Yep, okay. and as you start tightening that tongue okay. against the roof of your mouth, then you start put, putting more pressure with your diaphragm, your internal core of your diaphragm push harder and okay. harder, because at that point, you're sealing off more air, and it takes a little bit more effort to get the air pressure across, so you get that really good volume. Okay, and the initial sound should be kind of like the, the not so growl, right? So it's kind of like working into the yep. growl. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're at. Yeah, yeah, that was good. But you got about halfway up the ladder before okay. you dropped her off. So okay. you know that push, keep pushing hard with your tongue. Okay. So, and it could just be that placement, right? You mm -hmm. just gotta work on where that placement is and then that way you get that good push. So. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's better. It's working that was, on. Okay. That was better. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, just just working on that, getting your voice interjected at the in the beginning. Yeah. Um, not too much voice, but a little bit, and then then cut it out as you cut your voice as yep. you climb that ladder. Yeah. And then push hard, get that volume, that high pitch volume at the top, and then drop it off. Would you say you should tie it into like as much pressure you take into that diaphragm? You load yourself up because you know what you're gonna. Yeah. Like the length of time yeah. you're gonna be calling it. Yeah. You okay. want to take a real deep breath before the call. That okay. way, you'll, it'll be a lot easier to achieve those notes. Not exhausting your breath towards that right when you want to give it a gut punch. Right. Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. If you don't put enough air in, yeah. then by the time the gut punch happens, it's just pretty. Weird. And guys, you don't have to practice for an hour a day. It's 10 minutes a day, you know, on your commute to work. Maybe you want to come home from work. As soon as you walk in the garage, grab your calls, practice 10 minutes before you go into, into the house. You don't want to interrupt your family. Uh, unless your family's into it, maybe they want, they all want to go grab a call. You know, if your wife and kids like to, like to, to call elk or want to call elk too, it's really fun for them too, until it's not, you know, sometimes <laughs> mama bear gets kind of mad for, for you bugling in the house. I know mine does. So, okay, great. So a really good, um, practice you can do to get better at those transition notes, low to high, high to low, 
is do the old ambulance type sound, okay? So we're gonna go low, high, low, high, low, high, and just practice over and over and focusing on smooth transitions from that low note to the high note to the low note to the high note. It's not something like this. super boring, it's not sexy stuff, but it will definitely help out. If you're a new caller, or maybe you're an experienced caller, but you really want to clean up, you have some stuff in your bugles you want to really clean up, it'll really help you improve your game for calling hope. So next we're gonna do chuckling, right? Chuckling, grunting, right? Chuckles and grunts, that's what everybody struggles with because they're really tough. And uh, so first off, difference between chuckles and grunts. Chuckles are a really fast staccato type note, notes stuck together, whereas uh, grunts are more uh, elongated type notes and a little bit slower. I'll demonstrate. Here's, here's chuckles. And then here's grunts. So you see the difference? The biggest uh, tip I can give for, for chuckles and grunts is make sure you're breathing in and out between each chuckle or grunt, okay? A lot of guys will take one big breath and try to do all the chuckles. Well, you get about chuckle number three or four and you start running out of breath, and then you're like, oh man, I gotta fit a few more of these chuckles or grunts in. And then they just, they get quicker and quicker and quicker and you lose the right, the right cadence, okay? I like to tell people, Make one perfect one, take a deep breath, make another perfect one. Take a deep breath, make another perfect one. And then start slowing that gap in between each one as you get more confident and more comfortable with making the call. And, and until you start getting to that right cadence or rhythm, okay? I like to kind of think of it like a choo-choo train, right? Mm -hmm. Choo-choo, 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 choo until you get the right rhythm or cadence. And what is a chuckler grunt? How, do we, how are we gonna make it? What's, how, what's the structure of it? It's basically a cow call that we're exaggerating a bit, bit and we're making it quicker. We're putting a lot more air across the, the diaphragm and then we're throwing our voice in at the end. So, slow motion. You don't use a tube it sounds terrible <laughs> with a tube though it, it changes the game immensely so try one make one perfect one remember it's kind of a, an exaggerated cow call so it's a lot sharper a little shorter quicker cow call but we're throwing our voice in the punch to the gut yep. after it okay we're not beatboxing <laughs> all you beatboxers out there are probably gonna do really well with this <laughs> the rest of us <laughs> Less pitch, more gut. So not too bad, a little more gut, but you're also kind of blending your punch to the gut in with your your uh, diaphragm. So okay. We want to definitely, like a, a line in the sand. We don't want to yeah. cross it into each territory. Yeah. Okay. It's... Uh, uh, okay. Uh, drop it. Uh, okay. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. It's just a definite, like, and it's hard, man. That's yeah. probably the toughest part of this is, is making that break so it doesn't bleed together. Because if you bleed it together, then it kind of sounds... Uh, it, it sounds kind of weird. Now, you'll just have to work on that cadence. Okay. And to get the cadence right, you know, it's... Watch Elk, right? Yeah. You watch videos on YouTube uh -huh. of, of Elk. You know, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of really great videos on YouTube of elk just vocaliza doing lots of vocalization, a lot of bugling, yeah. chuckling, grunting, and just doing elk stuff. Okay. So watch those. The elk bugles and chuckles, yeah. you bugle and chuckle, right? Okay. You may have to send mama to the spa for the day to get her nails done or something <laughs> yeah. while you sit home greedily and, and watch, watch YouTube videos and bugle <laughs> at the TV. It's, 
So now we're gonna go for the grand poobah okay. of elk calls. This is tough. This one I struggle with for a really long time. I'd been a proficient call for a long time, but man, I really struggle with this. It's called the lip ball. Lip, B-A-W-L, like you're kind of like bawling, yeah. right? And it, you make that noise by making kind of a buzzing. <laughs> you're buzzing your lips <laughs> into the tube. Okay. Now some guys, or most guys are front buzzers, so they buzz on the front of their lips. Me, I'm a right side buzzer. I don't know why, my lips don't work. They don't work <laughs> on the, in the front buzzing as, as well. They'll yeah. do it, but not as well. But man, I can really buzz them good on the, on the right. Okay. And for guys that have a majestic mustache like yours, <laughs> kind of struggle with this a lot of times, you gotta remember, you gotta go underneath the mustache and get that lip contact, right? If you go put your, your mustache in front of your lips, it keeps your lip from buzzing. It'll kind of like interrupt. Yeah. So when my 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 uh, mustache hairs get a little long in <laughs> September, I can tell because my lip balls will kind of suffer. So I'll have to really make make sure I don't get any uh, hairs stuck in between my lips and my tube. So. so for using the tube, it's important that we create that seal. Whether it's like you're on the corner and the rest of it's sealed up, pushing the yep. air to that side, or if you're going to do the center, hair's got to be out of the way so the air is focused onto the the tube itself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you want to just okay. keep that hair off your seal, okay. basically. Okay. So. What I found, how I I got better at doing lip balls is I said, okay, what are the fundamentals? Okay, buzzing my lips, you know, I was had no problem using the diaphragm part, but buzzing my lips, that was where I was running into trouble. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna buzz my lips until the cows come home. I'm gonna figure out how to do this. So every time I put my tube into my face, I can, make, I can buzz my lips without even thinking about it. So that meant me sitting on the couch for a month, and you can do this, you know, so you don't make the whole family mad and just go and just buzz in your lips and your wife will probably be looking over you like what the heck are you doing you're an idiot i know my did <laughs> but it'll pay off big dividends because once your lips know okay we're gonna buzz on the end of this tube now we can we can enter our old friend mosquito again, right? <laughs> That's where mosquito comes back to play. So buzz your lips, and you put your put your uh, diaphragm in and make that little mosquito noise. <laughs> buzz it, buzz it, buzz it. Quit buzzing. Drop it off, punch the gut. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So complicated. Your tongue and your lips and your brain and everything. Like, I don't even know what we're doing right now. What do I do with my hands? <laughs> All right, let's see if I can get the buzz down. Okay. And I, I kind of. I kind of do better if I make duck, duck lips, right? So for all the Instagram girls out there that do this, when they take their pictures, they go, or maybe you had the injections that could do that. But okay. <laughs> anyway, if I make duck lips, my lips seem to be more supple okay. and, and they, okay. they buzz better, all right? Yep. yep. So if you want to make a lot more, you know, get a lot more depth to your buzz, you know, duck lip it. Duck lip it. All right. Oh, okay, you got it. I'm not good at the duck lip, so yeah, you're, I, we'll give it a I'm shot. I'm not either. I'm good at selfies, but... This is going to be interesting. It's a work in progress, okay. right? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it would have really surprised me on day one to like pick it up. And... <laughs> yeah. Some people are naturals at you know, yeah. doing the duck lip thing and, and buzzing, but um, no. I, I think you'll get it. You'll just have to uh, spend some time with it. Um, and then even sealing it up, mm. it, that pushback of air pressure it seems yeah. to kind of help a little bit too yeah. so that may help you kind of buzz them a little bit better yeah just got to find that pressure for the lips and find that buzz a little bit yep okay yep and then so, put, and then have that mosquito hit okay and then drop it punch to the gut all right so one see, more time let's let's see let's hear it with a diaphragm in there see, you, you may be just nailing it okay so mosquito drop it off punch in the gut yep all right here we go Can you do it without a tube? Maybe go. Probably not. Without spitting on everything, probably not. It's okay. <laughs> I'm gonna have to work on that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's definitely one you're gonna have to. I'm gonna have to work on that it, one. For it's, sure. it's tricky, but you'll get it. You'll get it. Yeah. You got lots of time between now and September to master it. We have a few months and and. I have full confidence you're going to be like calling in bulls left and right. All your buddies are going to be like, hey, 
you come calling you <laughs> yeah, me. absolutely yeah it'll be great to practice on the way home just work on those little tools the small things that'll put the whole call together for sure absolutely awesome and last but not least uh the bark right you're like a lot of people are like why would you want to bark at an elk isn't isn't that like a you know um is not like a, a warning vocalization by elk sometimes it is sometimes elk are like let's get the heck out of here mm -hmm. i smell a guy but sometimes when you're calling bulls in you'll have kind of a stalemate where they hang up um and usually they get to those spots and they hang up they call to you you call back they rub their antlers for a while and pretty soon they get to start getting a little suspicious like Hey, what's going on here? I came all the way over here to fight. You won't even show yourself. Mm -hmm. So they kind of bark at you, like kind of like demanding you to show yourself. Mm -hmm. That's when I like to bark. I bark back. Sometimes I bark scream. Sometimes I bark chuckle. Mm -hmm. Just depends on what the bull and I have been having for a conversation. Maybe he's a chuckler. Maybe the whole time he can, he's been calling to me, he's just been chuckling away. He hasn't been really screaming. I'll probably bark and chuckle at him. Okay. If he's been a, just a big ripper, a big screamer, I'll probably bark and scream. And usually, in that situation, he's locked up behind a, a couple trees. I can't see him, he can't see me, and he barks, and he's looking around for that bull. I'll take that opportunity, I'll bark, scream, bark, chuckle, and then I'll move up toward him. Let's say he's 60 yards away, I'll bark, scream, bark, chuckle, move up 25 yards or 30 yards. I'll try to move at least halfway toward the bull, mm -hmm. and then at the last second, I'll take a couple side steps, as soon as I get to that spot, I make sure I knock an arrow and get ready. Because a lot of times it's just that little bit of faith. They, they're like, oh, that bull's like, oh, here he comes. I got to see this guy. Boom, he'll pop out of his little hiding spot. And a lot of times they'll kind of come out broadside because remember, right right before elk fight, a lot of times it's a big show, show thing for them back and forth. They want to look big. They want to kind of show off. You know, bulls don't just come in from the top of the mountain and then come in usually and just head on and fight each other. Mm -hmm. There's usually like a little parade thing where they kind of walk back and forth, they size each other up, they want to look big, mm -hmm. they display their racks, they put their racks way out, they bristle up, they just kind of walk stiff-legged, you know, kind of like a couple of dudes, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey man, you want to fight? <laughs> anyway, so when he comes out from there, he's going to want to posture a little bit and show himself mm -hmm. and there's a lot of times it's a really great time to get that uh, broadside shot. So. Okay. Anyway, what is a, what's the structure of a, of a bark? It's basically that exaggerated cow call. It's like an exaggerated grunt or chuckle okay. times 10, right? Okay. You're putting all the air you've got, it's gonna be pretty short on, the, on the, the, the diaphragm and a lot of voice, okay? That just the biggest punch to the butt, punch to the gut, <laughs> the, biggest, the biggest bunch of air you can push across this reed. All the air you got. Take a bit, big breath and then dump it all in one call, in okay. one shot. There we go. Try it up too. More volume. More. That's really good. More bass punch to the gut. More though, punch to the gut. If, if okay. you got it, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. Not a little bad. less voicey. You're a little voicey in your punch to the gut. Okay. More. Uh, okay. Uh, not. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's a just. Old. Okay. <laughs> Beatbox it. <laughs> yeah, a little more hot, and then give more air on your um, on more time on your diaphragm. Okay. Yep. So guys, just put some time into your calling. You'll thank us later. It's, it's a 10, 15 minute day thing. Uh, diaphragms are consumable. You're gonna go through a few. If you're practicing a lot, you're gonna go through a few. Um, it's not unreasonable to think you may go through two or three diaphragms between now and September. Here we are middle of May. So uh, between now and September, you may go through two or three diaphragms with your practicing. During elk season, I wouldn't leave home without at least four diaphragms in your pack. Um, you may only use two of them. You may use all of them, just depending on how much calling you're doing and how you're taking care of them. So um, anyway, I, you sound great, man. I think, awesome. I, I think yeah. by, by, in a week, you're going to be showing the guys around the shop a thing or two, honestly. I, yeah. I, think, I mean, 
you've got a lot of really great potential you kind of natural at it. So thank you, appreciate. It. I think uh, like with well, thanks to you, uh, enough time and like practice. I'm, what I'm finding with this is knowing your call and knowing the pressure. You know, being okay to put like all of that air through and all that pressure through and and then kind of gauge it and apply it to the tips that you've you've put. I mean, within a week or so, you should at least be like, caught up to to some of the the tips and tricks to just get you within uh, bow range and, and get a response and, and the things that we even just hope to get when you're on the field. So yep. thank you. That yep. was a lot of fun. Yep. That was Absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. Thank you. That was cool. Yep. Well, thanks guys for indulging us. Uh, comment below if you like what you saw, if you have some questions, um, we, can, uh, we can try to help you out as, as much as we can. So thank you. Um.